she wasn't pleading with God. She just began to see, I'm going to say this, his plan for her, his thoughts for her that were good and not evil to give her a future and to give her a hope. <laughs> so what did she do? Every day she saw it. She saw herself walking. And what she wanted to do, she wanted to be a teacher. And that was the desire of her heart before she had all of this started going on. And on the day that her little boy turned, that he, that he walked into his kindergarten class, there she was holding his hand, walking him into the class. And then she, listen, then she went around the corner and went into her classroom to teach her first day. You need to have a conversation with a God that's already said you're healed. With the Jesus that's already said it is finished, just have a conversation with him. And then you need to have another thought. You need to see yourself whole. And do it if it's your children that you want to come home, see them getting up out of the drug den and having them will come home to you. And you see them coming through the front door and they've got their arms open and they're saying, Mama, they're saying, come on. I don't care how old they are. If you're sick, I want you to see yourself. I want you to see the doctors looking at you and saying, man, I'm sorry, I don't understand it, but it's completely gone. And by the way, that just happened to our missionaries in Kenya. Gary, we call him Bear Jessen, had a tumor growth and it was growing inside of his ear it was not malignant but it was a tumor that was growing and they were concerned that it would grow into his brain they were very they, there were a lot of things <laughs> and of course they listed every one of them and you know what they went in and actually it was interesting they went in to have the surgery that the doctor suggested that they have and something happened in the middle of it all and they just weren't able it was insurance it was weird it was da 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 and they didn't have the surgery and so here get this now get this everybody get they were disappointed and you say, well, but these are, oh, I, they, they're, they're miracle-believing people. But they had stood at this place, and they believed that where they were, that that was the open door for them, and that's okay. You know, you can be healed through medicine. You can be healed through a divine intervention. You can be healed through a supernatural restoration where you restore when somebody says you won't. And so... There they went back and they didn't do it and you know he was still there and they went back all this time later and they they took another picture of that area that was supposed to contain the tumor and there's absolutely nothing there absolutely nothing there and they put the pictures the two pictures right there next to and the doctors stood there and they looked at it and they brought it they brought them all in they looked at it, and they go, mm, there's no way that this could have happened, except that the man who took the pictures, the doctor who took them, was there and had examined and had seen not just the pictures, but had been dealing with him the entire time. Come on, folks. The God of the universe, the creator of the universe, loves you. And knows you intimately by name and has knit you together in your mother's womb. If I if I, I believe in Jesus' name, I'm going to be able to say that to you every time I stand before you. Stand to your feet. I don't know that we're not going to have time. We're not going to be able to sing those songs. Just, I, all of those, those songs were kind of, um, I kind of want to worship. I, let's do the blessing. First of all, you need to know who you are. John looked at me yesterday. And he goes, okay, now. He goes, now, uh, if you were to say, 
on Wednesday night, my purpose for what I am ministering is. And I said, hang on, I don't want to say this too quickly. I don't want to make sure that I say the right thing. <laughs> he sat there for just a second, and, and it just, that they would remember who they are. You're going to have to know who he is to remember who you are. And guess what? It can't be what somebody else says he is. And it can't be what somebody, even if they love God, they, they love you. But there's, I, I don't know what it is, but a lot of times people will just begin to just eh, vomit all over you. The things of, that aren't going to happen and why they can't happen. And here's what you need to do. And blah, 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 blah. But you know what? It's time for you to have that conversation with the creator of the universe. It's time for you to remember who you are because if you don't know who he is, you can't remember who you are. He is love. He is goodness. He is mercy. He is kindness. He is gentleness. Come on, he is. And people say, well, well, you, you need to say he is just and he is right. Yes, he is. Of course he is. He's just and he's righteous. And But that's how he can be good. That's how he can have mercy. That's how he can have kindness. So right now, first of all, I'm going to ask, how many of you in here need to make things right with God? Raise your hand real fast. Raise them up high. Right now, you, want, you need to make things right with God. Go ahead, raise them up high and be unashamed. And there's people with their hands up all over this place. Listen, and you know what? I say to you, God bless you. Thank you for being honest. And I need you to know that right now, you've already made the reconnection. You're already there. He just gathered you. There must have been 12 people that raised their hand that said, I need to make things right with God. You see, and that, that's what it is. You just say, I, I just want to be right. And guess what? That makes you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that, that's kind of one of those words, those sayings where everybody goes, huh? But it just means that because you say, Daddy, I want to be right. He grabs you up and he brings you into himself. And he says, now you're righteous with me. Come on. Come on, let's make the, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. You are now about to create. You are about to create. We create all the time. You're about to create with life. Come on, everybody, say these words with me. Oh, creator of the universe that loves me and calls me by my name, you knit me together in my mother's womb, and I thank you. I want to know you so that I can remember who I am in Jesus. Forgive me. I've done a lot wrong. But I give you my heart. I give you my life. Thank you for allowing me to begin again. Let the adventure, let the adventure continue. Let the adventure begin. Father, we love you. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're not cursed. <laughs> You're blessed. Come on, somebody say yes. You're blessed. Why are you blessed? Because he says you're blessed. And you know what you want to do right? How many of you want to do right in here? How many of you are in here and everything in you wants to do right? Come on. You want to be called according to his purpose. You want to do right. He sees it. And he takes you right where you are. And you're blessed. Okay. Father, I thank you. People are being healed right now. Just lift up your hands. Justin, just play. Don't sing anything, Justin. Just play by the Spirit. And I would rather you not even play a song. I'm going to ask you just to play by the Spirit, Justin. Just play. And turn him up. Justin, turn yourself up. And I want you to, 
I want you to allow the, the sound that destroys that destroys what has held you captive. It destroyed the lies that you said over, you said to yourself and the lies that people have said over you. It destroys even the words that have been spoken over you concerning, concerning a condition in your body. It's not that that's a lie, but the truth is, is that God's plan and purpose is not that you would be sick and die. His plan and his purpose is that his life inside of you would never know defeat. That the same spirit, lift up your hands, come on, lift up your hands, play just to play. Play just in like, like everything depended on the waters parting and, and, the, and the skies opening up. Come on, and the truck, just play, just play. Because as these people are hearing a sound, it's a sound of victory, it's a sound of freedom, it's a sound of healing. We lift up our hands around here, and it's the universal sign of surrender. It's also the sign of a, of a baby that's not yet vocal, that sees that parent, that one that loves them, and lifts up. What do you do? Lifts up those hands, and what does that mean? Let me tell you, that means pick me up. Pick me up. Pick me up. So surrender, pick me up, come on. However, are all of the above. He's your God. Jesus said it is finished. Healing comes right now in the sound where you hear yourself say, I love you because you first loved me. Come on, say it out, out, loud, out loud with me. I love you. Say it after me. I love you. Because you first loved me. I love you because you first loved me. Now, let him be your first love right now. So, Lord, I thank you right now. The blood stays. It dries. There's no cancer. There's no diabetes, blindness, deafness, lame. Come on, those that are lame, those right now that are lame, and people give people brand new hips and knees in their feet, in their shoulders. Come on right now, in their, in their spine, every spine straighten, bones begin to strengthen. Father, I thank you right now. Optical nerves right now literally come back to life. And the recovery from the strokes, from the heart attacks, from the effects of, of, the, uh, of the treatment of the cancer. Come on, Alzheimer's, dementia, you cannot stay. Everybody right now, I want you to take one step forward. Come on, take one step forward. Step out of. Come on, leave your old Leave your old behind right now. Leave your old behind. Yeah, leave your old behind. That'll work. Leave your whole life behind. Step out and allow that. And let the sickness just, oh, just drop off of you. Allow the depression to drop off of you. Oh, come on, those of you begin to, begin those of you that pray in a prayer language, lift it up, lift it up strong, lift it up loud. Those of you that just begin to worship God in your native tongue. If your native tongue is Spanish, just begin to praise him in Spanish. If your native tongue is English, praise him in English. Come on, if it's Mandarin Chinese, praise him in Chinese. Come on, just begin to praise the Lord. Oh, we worship you. We bless you, we love you, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the sound, sound heal you. The 
Lord's just, uh, you know, he's, he's just, just filling me with the song of the spirit. And he just said, despair is leaving. And, and just to open your mouth and despair is leaving. So thank you, God. We just thank you. Yes, Lord God, we thank you. It's leaving, Lord God. We thank you for your freshness and your anointing and your boldness and your encouragement, Lord God. Despair, despair is leaving, Lord God. Thank you. We just loose your spirit, Lord God, all over this place. Despair is leaving, it has no place in you, there is no space in you for despair. Let the joy of the Lord, like a rushing mighty river, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let the light the light that caused the world to be summoned into existence. That same light causes darkness to flee. So despair, it has no place within you. Despair, there's no place for you in me. Have a seat in wholeness. You know, this is how we do it. You just go from one thing to the next. You're just a Holy Ghost being. Thank you, Justin. You're just, it's just real. And I know for some of you, it might be your first time here. You can bring the lights up. It might be your first time here, and that might have been a white knuckle ride for you. Just hang in there. I'm just a little Baptist girl that's been tampered with. And so I can remember my white knuckle ride. <laughs> but I played around that riverbank until I finally slipped in. <laughs> and the rest is history. I want to let you know that uh, this Wednesday night, I am a gentleman by the last name of Twyman. I'm going to be playing a frequency that they have discovered that aligns with when God told Moses, tell them I am that I am. So I'm just going, honey, I'm doing a plug for Wednesday night, babe. And so what I want you guys to do is to realize that there was a sound. And we're going to be releasing that sound, worshiping in that sound. We're going to be standing in that sound. We're going to be whole in that sound. We are going to experience that God, creator of the universe, who loves us intimately and calls us by our name. Amen? Hey, if it's your first time to be with us and you can pry your fingers off from the chair in front of you. It, we just have a little gift that we'd like to give you first time visitors. Will you mind raising your hand so that we can just welcome you? Hey, are we good? No? All right. Well, give everybody a hand clap in here. Aralia, I can't wait to get my hands on you. I already have in my heart, okay? Well, hey, everybody. How folks? We just need to give each other a hug. You need to go meet some of your long lost family that you've never met yet. It's family reunion day. Come on. Let's stand to our feet. Let's greet each other in the name of Jesus. Hey, do it real quick because I'm about to call you back to your seat. So go ahead. Go ahead. Hug somebody. Tell them you love them. Introduce yourself. He's coming on the cloud. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Look around, family. See the people that are seated and go, go after them. Go Every get them. Chain will break. Go get them. Broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sissy.
Where's Dillis? Where's Dillis? Oh, she's ministering. Papa John, come here, talk to these people. All right, hey, we're going to go ahead and honor the Lord with our tithe and substance tonight. I'm today, I mean, this morning, man, time, time flies when you're having a good time. <laughs> All right, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand, please. And our faithful, good-looking ushers and usherettes will serve you. Amen. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you play that song I asked you to play? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. All right, while y'all are uh, continuing to bring your offering to the front, we do have a few announcements for the week. Um, our women's recovery group will meet again tomorrow in the connection room. It's, it's the last two meetings have been small, but they have been spot on what the Holy Ghost wanted and what the ministry needed to, to, to go forth. So if you're interested in that or you have any questions, you can see Kathleen Higgins after the service. And we have baptism coming up on Sunday, April the 24th. It'll be part of our, our morning worship. We've got a sign up at the back table. If you have any questions, catch me after the service if you can, or call me uh, during, the, uh, during office hours uh, during the week and we've got freedom call coming up on friday april the 29th so be looking for information go ahead and start oh, praying we're going to need prayer partners and uh we may need some some help setting some things up or anything it's things like that so when that time comes uh miss lorena will have sign up sheets out and she'll be sharing more information so be looking for that y'all have a blessed week no I, if i thought that it was Hallelujah. Father, we love you and praise you. We're so grateful. We are truly grateful to be able to sow into your kingdom. We're truly grateful that you provide seed for us to sow. And we're grateful that you multiply the seed sown. So, Father God, thank you. Your kingdom is going forth all over this world. And it's going forth from Dickinson, Texas. And we just thank you and give you the praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I asked <laughs> that song, I just, just, it came to me earlier, and maybe you remember that, I don't know, from Sunday school or 
I remember years ago in the Word of Faith movement, that was a big song at the time. You know, if you're, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. You know, the, the, there's, there's something I've always believed and I've learned along the, uh, along the years that an inward experience should have an outward expression. So if you're happy and you know you're happy, then clap your hands. Or if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. There's something about giving expression to what we know is on the inside of us by faith. That's how that develops. Jesus said something Wednesday that yeah, at the first it may sound controversial, but really it's not. She said, words don't teach. Here's the thing. When you hear a word and then you embrace it and act on it, then it becomes experiential and then it really does something in your life. People hear words all the time. They don't do anything with the words that they hear. Let me talk to these people over here. Maybe that will you all know what I'm saying? And so there's, there's, always an, a, there's always an expression to the things of God. And Gina, you know, Wednesday night she was teaching. I thought it was so cool. She was, she was showing us how, the, how different emotions create a, a literal scientific frequency in our, in our lives. You know, the Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So we know that if you, produ if you have a merry heart and you act on that, it actually produces something in your body that acts the same as a medicine. Do you realize that God has put everything on the inside? When he created us, he gave us everything in our body to heal itself. Yes. Amen? And so when we, when we realize that and we and we, we act on these things, and we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength, that joy, you want joy? Start rejoicing. Yeah. When you start doing these things, there's something that actually happens. Scientists have even found out now, cardiologists have come to the conclusion that your heart has a brain. There are things called dendrites and anglia. I don't know. Gina has all that, all that, the, all that stuff. But there are actually things, and now they've come to the conclusion that the heart actually functions like a brain. Well, we already knew that, because Proverbs twenty-three seven says this: "As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he." And so science is stumbling on things that are all God's already created, and it's just stumble upon these things. I think that these discoveries in science just help bring these people in that realm, they bring them that much closer to a relationship with their creator. So there's nothing wrong with science, but, but it, was, uh, it was interesting how actu actually the, your, the atmosphere that you live in can be changed by the way you conduct yourself or your, your uh, uh, emotional well-being. And so we find out that these things in the Word of God, they allow us to live at a higher level of emotions than sometimes we allow ourselves to do. Amen? She said this the other day. She said, she says, you know, you don't have to act that way. And I realize that. We really don't. We have choices. Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, it says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. How many know that every day we have the opportunity and the right to choose life over death? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we are, we, we are products of what comes out of our mouth. Jesus said this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so this thing about emotions, I'll tell you what, it's about time we started getting emotional in the right way. Because you know what my Bible tells me? That the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I said this Wednesday, and I don't, I don't know if I said it on a Sunday yet, because sometimes these services get all mixed up. But I said this Wednesday, I said it's a new term. Have maybe, maybe you can tell me if I said this last Sunday. There just seems to be no end to it. Did I say that last Sunday? I'm going to say it again. All right, somebody has, some people weren't here last Sunday. 
And I just thought, you know, that term we use, there just seems to be no end to it. And usually we say, use that in a, negative, in a negative connotation. But my Bible tells me in Isaiah chapter 9 of his government or rule of authority and of his peace, there is no end to it. So we can start de declaring some things that there's no end to. Man, there's, oh, God's peace. Oh, his goodness is overtaking me all the days of my life. There just seems to be no end to his goodness, I'm telling you. I asked someone today, how you doing? And they said, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I said, man, I haven't heard that one. That's, a, that's kind of a new one on me. I'm just too blessed to be stressed. How many want your cities to, to grow and, and be good? Proverbs 11.10 says this. It says, when, the, when it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And then the next verse it says, when the righteous are blessed, a city is exalted. How many want your cities to be do better than what they're doing? Okay, then I declare a blessing over you. I declare it's well with you. How many righteous people do we have in this room? Okay, so if that's the case, if things are going well and you're blessed, guess what? It affects your city. But the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, two of those out of the three are felt realities. You can feel peace. You can actually feel joy. And the other one, righteousness, is more of a, a positional thing. But I'm going to tell you something. When you understand that you're seated in heavenly places in Christ, and that you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, guess what? That should produce a feeling of well-being in your life. When you realize that by the grace of God, you have been made righteous, and you're not a little worm, you're not a little sin. You know, you want, if you want to declare you're a sinner saved by grace, that's fine. I guess you can do that, but you're no longer a sinner once you've asked Jesus. Your identity has been changed, and now you have become righteous. It's just a fact. It's just the position of where you're at. Now, you can accept that. You can walk in that. You can act that way. You can think that way. It's all up to you. I want to encourage you to do that. You know what, I'm, as a pastor, you know, what, you know what one of the greatest things that me and Gina want to do? We want to get you to see reality for what it is. Reality. New creation reality. Who you are, Gina said. If I was to label that, I would say, I want them to remember who they are. And the thing about it is, when the testimony was given there about the woman with the, with the kidney, and she said, just go and see yourself. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of a shame, but it's changing. Too many people, they repent enough to get into the kingdom. They just don't repent thoroughly enough to see the kingdom. And so what does repentance mean? It means just changing the way you think. You know, I've been in the ministry. I've been saved over 40 years. And you know what I have to do from time to time? i got to change the way I think. Just the other day, can I tell on myself? How many like it when I tell on myself? I'd rather have you tell on yourself than tell on me. Okay, I'll tell on myself. I was in the office the other day and... Uh, Somebody, somebody was in the hospital waiting for a procedure to be done. And I, I checked on. I said, Carol, how, how's he doing? And he says, well, he was supposed to go in at 830, and uh, they didn't get him in there until 1030. And this is what I said. Oh, that's about right. Uh-oh. Now, why did I say that? You know, there was nothing right about that. You know, supposed to get in at 8.30, get him in at 10.30. Why is that? Because we just, well, you know, they're usually late. They'll keep you waiting there in the, in the doctor's office for hours and hours and all that. And said, that's about right. No, there ain't nothing right about that. So I told on myself, now I'm going to start telling on some people. No, I'm just kidding. But I caught myself. As soon as I said it, I caught myself. And you know, I said, you know, I shouldn't say that's about right. I should say, you know, next time they're going to get him in there on time. 
you know? It's all a matter of how we look at things, and it's all a matter of how we condition ourselves. And we have the opportunity con to condition ourselves according to the Word of God because God's target is always the renewed mind. That's his target. It's always, it's always a renewed mind. I was, uh, man, I was listening, I was listening to an interview. They were interviewing Mike Krzyzewski. He's the coach of Duke. I'll tell you what, I have not watched a basketball game all year, and the other day was the first basketball game I watched all year. I watched the University of Houston. They were in the, in the, uh, in the, in the Elite Eight. You know, they got to the Elite Eight, and then they got beat. And then Coach Yusefsky from Duke, he's 75 years old. And they won yesterday. And so now that Houston's out, now I don't feel bad about rooting for Duke. So I'm going to root for the 75-year-old coach who's still doing it, praise God. He said, as a matter of fact, Barry, he broke the record for most appearances in the Final Four at 75 years of age. And they were talking about a former championship they won where they, had, they were down by one point with 2.1 seconds left. And they had to go the full length of the court in order to score. And he got his guys together, and he said, he told them, we are going to win this game. We are going to win this game. And the interviewer said, well, did they believe it? And he said, I don't know if I even believed it, but I said it. And many of you may know about this. They threw a full, full court pass to Christian Leitner. He took it. Dribbled one time, took a turnaround jumper, scored. Championship won with 2.1 seconds left. But you know when he said that, he goes, I don't even know if I believe it. Let me give you a little help with your testimony. If you pray for someone and you're scared spitless to pray for somebody, and you pray for someone and they get healed anyway, tell that in your testimony. Some people love giving testimony, and that's what happened. They were scared, and then they'll get up and say, well, the Spirit of God came upon me in a great way, and I just, I just felt this strong anointing in mind. No, if you were scared, saved. You know what that helps people? It helps people know that, hey, God will act. God will, will, will have a breakthrough for us just through obedience. Just through obedience. And on the flip side of that, if you just know that, know that you know that God told you to go and pray for a person and you know that when you laid hands on that person, they're going to get healed and they get healed, you know what? Tell that too. That's not bragging. That's because that's a, a spirit of faith or the gift of faith was on you for that particular moment right there. And, it's, uh, and, and people need to know that, that that's an, that's an important side of it too. You know what we need to do? We need to learn to start grabbing our moments. Just grab our moments. And too many people, too many people, I feel looking for a breakthrough that will change something rather than being involved in a process that changes everything. Well, I'm going to say that one again. So often we look for a breakthrough that's going to change something in our life, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you realize, you know, in the, in the book of Acts, and suddenly, you know, we look for the suddenlies. You know that in Scripture most of the time suddenlies were preceded by a process? In the book of Acts, suddenly, and suddenly, the Spirit of the Lord was poured out, but they were up in that room for 10 days, and then 10 days praying. Sometimes it's hard to get people to pray for 10 minutes. And they gather together in that upper room because God told them to go up there and gather and wait for the comfort of the Father to be sent, for the comforter be, to be sent. And so they waited, they waited and waited and waited, and then suddenly... I remember when Rodney Howard Brown, when he first came on the scene, it seemed like, it seemed like, uh, and then someone said, boy, you seem to, God's made you a success overnight. And he said this, well, that's the longest night I've ever been, that I've ever experienced. They didn't know about the years and years and years of just pushing and no money and just being faithful and preaching to 10 people and, and all those years and years and years. There was a process involved. Amen? And so I think that the thing that, and, I, and I, I like to preach on this because I know that it's so important, 
Because God says, don't cast away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for you have need of endurance. That after receiving the word, that, that, that you would receive the promise of God. Sometimes it takes endurance. Sometimes, you know, from the amen to here it is, there's that space in, the, in between called living by faith. And why I like to talk about this, and I feel qualified to talk about this, because I've been doing this for over 40 years, me and my wife. We've been doing this year in, year out. We haven't backed off. We haven't compromised. We haven't said, well, you know, God's really doing, not doing, I'm going to tell you so. We keep preaching miracles, keep preaching uh, d- deliverance, keep preaching the fullness of the kingdom. I like what Paul said. I like what Paul said he, he, in Romans. He says, when I come to you, I'm going to come in the fullness of the kingdom of Jesus. I want to come in the fullness of the kingdom. And this world is looking for the fullness of the kingdom. That's why it's very important that we keep the testimony that God's given us. The written or uh, the written or spoken word of God. So that testimony that was given today. And I was just going to say it, it, uh, it was a testimony about a growth about growth, about bear. Do you realize that the Bible says that the testimonies of the Lord, they are my inheritance? and they are the rejoicing of my heart. So when someone gets healed of something like a growth of coming off of their bodies, you know what? That belongs to me. That's a testimony of the Lord. That's my inheritance. The biggest challenge God has is teaching his kids how to spend their inheritance. Is this helping anybody today? But we're learning. Amen? We're learning. And we stub our toe and we may fall down, but the righteous man gets up. He keeps getting up. He keeps dusting himself off. He keeps involved with the process. So Gina was telling us, teaching us, how we can get our emotions in check. Because it's real important. Because when you're anxious and you're fretful and you've got, you've got anxiety and fear, I'm going to tell you something. Your creativity goes out the window. It just it doesn't enable you to think right. You've got a fog. It's not, you know, so it's important that we get our emotions in check. It's important that we allow the joy to be our strength. It's important that we allow the peace of God that passes understanding to rule and reign in our heart. I believe these are all things that produce an emotional response in our life. It's important when we say things out of our mouth you know, usually the kingdom of God, everything in the kingdom is preceded by a declaration. And we see that all through the word. You know, when Jesus, when Jesus went to heal Jairus' Jair, daughter, you know, he took a mic and says, come on, we're going to go to your house. On the way, though, the woman with the issue of blood sort of gummed things up a little bit. And here is Jairus, his, daughter, his daughter's dying, and is going to, they're going to the house, and this woman with the issue of blood, she said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. And in the midst of all that crowd and everybody's trying to get to Jesus, he said, who touched me? And the woman was scared, you know. She really didn't want to be singled out because she wasn't even supposed to be there. She had a malady in that time that if you had this, you were considered unclean. It was almost like a leper. And when she would come, she would have, she was supposed to announce herself unclean. Unclean because of the issue of blood that she had. Man, sometimes we think we got it bad. So I'm sure she didn't want to be singled out. She says, who touched me? And then, and it's interesting that later on, when it talks about Jesus going to cities, it said people were just trying to go and touch the hem of his garment. Guess what? The story got out. The testimony got out. There were others that went, you know, after that happened with her, there were others that just picked up on it. You know, there's a story I heard. It's such a great story. It was from a pastor in California. He said that the, these people went to a coffee, went to a coffee place to get coffee. And they paid for their coffee, and they said, I want to pay for the coffee next, uh, behind me. Okay, very, very good. So he drove off, and they got up to the window, and the person behind says, oh, your coffee's already been paid for. Really? Well, then I'm going to pay for the coffee for the people behind me. 
And then they drove up and, and, they, and they said, well, your coffee's been paid for. Really? Well, you know what I want to do? I want to pay for the coffee that's behind me. It went on for six hours, an unbroken chain for six hours. Now, I'm sorry, that's a miracle. Now, I've done that before, paid for it, but I knew the person behind me. You know, someone behind me, I knew who they were. And I said, well, I'm just going to, yeah, I want to pay for theirs too. Or pay for their meal or whatever it was. Can you imagine that? Just a total stranger. Oh, I don't know. I want to pay for them too for six hours. You realize that's how the kingdom should be operating. When, this, the, when an initial act of obedience and kindness in someone's life, that it would create such a chain reaction. You know, sometimes we want, we want a supernatural touch of God. Sometimes, you know, I've seen people get their hands laid on them and they fall down and they're crying and snot running down their face because they've been touched by God. And then you just, and then you just, and then you're standing there. Hey, I ain't feeling nothing. What's wrong with me? Do you realize that God may be wanting to speak to you just through an inspired thought? And that may not be the way God wants to speak to you. Some of those people, they've got such deep things going on in their life, and man, it's almost like a complete surgical overhaul. And they need it at that time. But then we're standing there and we're thinking, well, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't God move that way with me? He may not want to move that way with you. He may want to just put something in your heart or in your mind that's going to cause some change in your life. And it will produce, and that's why I get this testimony a lot when I first got saved, because it's a first love testimony. And I remember when I was coaching, and then all of a sudden, one day, the Lord just spoke to me out of Romans 12, 21. And I'll read it, I'll quote it out of the Passion Translation. It says, don't allow evil to defeat you, but defeat evil by good. King James says, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And at that particular moment in my life, I'd just been saved. I'm still coaching at the college. And the Lord dealt with me that that scripture right there is, applies to how I treat umpires. I got a coach sitting in here. L listen up, coach. So I have... So he dealt with me that... I no longer now, I'm able to get in umpires' faces and scream at them, you know, for, and that's a lot of coaches, they do that. They, you know, it's just part, it was part, you say it was part of the game, but, but now I was playing by a different, some, a different rule system, you know, and I just, as a witness, I just didn't have the luxury to get out there and turn my cap around so I wouldn't bump you with the bill of it, and, you know, I would, and then get thrown out of the game for bumping the umpire with the bill of your cap. <laughs> y'all have a picture of this now? Are y'all picturing this in your mind? So God dealt with me, man, I can't do that. He said, don't be overcome with evil because in my mind, umpires were evil. Some of them anyway, all right? So don't be overcome with evil, overcome evil with good. And so I've learned when the bad calls were made, I would go out there and it was more like, hey, let us reason together, brother. <laughs> I said, come, let us reason together. And I tried that approach and it worked. And you know what I found out? I got more favor. I got more good calls. I got more, I got more out of acting that way than going out there and acting the fool out on the, out on the, and so, so then I, but I realized it had to start with me before I could show it to my players, and so I started to change, and then I told my players, hey, you know what, we're not gonna, we're not gonna yell stuff at the other team, we're not gonna get on the other team, we're gonna, we're gonna just uh, encourage our own guys during the game, don't worry about the other team. Don't worry about making, uh, you know, uh, John at each other, doing all that stuff. Don't, don't, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to focus on us. And these kids, they became like maniacs. Barry, I'm telling you, they were just, man, from the time we said play ball to the end of the game, we were just yelling for each other. And you know what happened? There was an atmospheric change. 
And it's what we should expect when you release the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy, you release that into any atmosphere, then you can expect God to honor it and just bring change to that atmosphere. And it's just like that chain reaction of paying for someone's coffee. When you do that, when you become salt and light, which God's called us to do, and that has more to do with a process than it does a, an event that happens or a breakthrough of one thing. It be, when you become salt and light, everything gets changed. And that's what we should be expecting in our life. In our families, in our churches, I'm going to tell you something. You guys do a good job because people over the years have come in this place and said, I can feel the love of God in this place. They said, almost tangibly, I can feel the love of God. And so it's, that's not, so I just want to let everybody here know you are officially part of the greeting team. Well, what do you do? I'm a greeter. I greet people. I encourage people. Anybody can do that. You don't have to have a degree to do that. Amen? You just walk over and say, how are you doing today? Amen? Glad you're here. You're looking good. Now, guys say that to guys. Don't say that to the women, guys. You know, hey, you, man, you, you're looking good today. Well, no, that's uh, that's just. <laughs> Amen? But, uh, but. There was an atmospheric change. The whole atmosphere of our ball club changed because of that one scripture out of Romans 12, 21. Don't be overcome or defeated by evil. You defeat evil with good. That's why I talk, you know, when people say, well, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. You know what? I think we need to get out of this fighting mentality and realize because when you've got fight, fight, fight on your mind, ah, oh, the devil's been fighting me. I've been fighting the devil. The devil's been fighting me. I've been fighting the devil. I'm going to tell you something. My Bible tells me that Jesus already defeated him. Amen? So we don't fight for a victory. We fight from a victory. And we just, in, we just enforce the victory that's already been won. Is that making sense? Amen? So when you enforce the victory, you just start releasing. You know what's great about being a believer? Jesus said this, when you come and drink of me, out of your belly shall flow rivers. You realize by taking a drink, you become like a fire hydrant of anointing? That's the capacity that God gives us. When we take a drink from him, we have the capacity to be a hydrant of his anointing that flows out. Don't tell me that you ain't gifted. Don't tell me you can't. Don't tell me that because it's just not true. But you know what? You got to be involved in the process. You got to be, call those things that you, you, you get involved with this. And, and here's the thing. No, let me go back to that story. It's a big part of that story. So we're doing that. You know, that's the way we conduct ourselves during each game. And I had a coach from the other team. He was a coach from Blinn. I'll tell you his name. His name is Leroy Dreyer. Leroy Dreyer is a legend. Barry, you played when Leroy was coaching. He was a legend. I mean, they named a field after him while he's still coaching. And he came to me, and I just, it just blessed me so much, and I never, because it had an impact on me, because I had a lot of respect for this man. But he asked me, a young coach in, in, in my 20s, he asked me, how do you get these guys to do that? This is, a, this is a veteran coach. This is a guy because they were su there was such a, you know, they were so maniac, I guess is the best way, to, in a good way. He says, Coach, we just decided to buy into each other. You know, we just decided to, from the time the game started. And, and so that was a, see, that's a first love, that's a first love revelation, a first love thing that God, he just, uh, he, uh, he just, uh, what was the term I just used? Um, he just enhanced a thought to me. He gave me a thought, and I acted on it, and he blessed it, you see? And so this whole thing that we're talking about, you know, Gina, she's trying, she trying to get us to slow our roll, you know? 
You got to slow down. You got to say, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. Well, that, you know, in, in, uh, in Hebrews, it talks about that rest means to put one foot forward. So you keep putting that, your best foot forward. It's a process. It's a process that we're involved in. It's not something that's, you don't get it all overnight. You get it through time. And I feel confident in at least saying this because I've been at this for over 40 years, and I, you know what? I ain't quitting. Now, I met my friend John Elliott gave his testimony the other day, and he said something, you know, all my friends in ministry, there was about 13 of us that started out in ministry, only three are still in ministry. I ain't going nowhere. So you may not like everything we have to say, but you know what? We've been around long enough. I ain't backing down. We're going forward. God promised this. The testimonies of the Lord are my inheritance. They're the rejoicing of my heart. I'm going to keep rejoicing. I'm going to tell you something. When you rejoice over the testimony, that will affect your feeling. You know, Jesus said this in Revelation chapter 2. He said the, to the lukewarm church at Laodicea, he said, I want you to go back and do the works you did when you first got saved. Okay? Well, some people say, well, if I really don't have it in my heart to do it, then I'll, I'm a hypocrite. No, he didn't say do it if you feel like it. Because doing produces a feeling. You see? And so go back and do the works that you did at first. Sometimes we just got to shake ourselves. Sometimes we just got to real. Because here's the thing. If we're going to go forward in God, there needs to be deep, thorough repentance. Repentance is not a dirty word. It's a good word. It repentance, the root word, it comes from the word where we get penthouse, which means a higher place. And I'm not talking about the magazine. A penthouse is a higher place. So these things, when we, when we decide, man, I'm going to change that way of thinking. I ain't thinking right. I know I ain't thinking right. But you know what? I don't have to act this way. I don't have to stay this way. I'm going to go ahead by faith, and I'm going to repent, and I'm going to change my way of thinking. And I'm, I choose to go to a higher place in God. But it's all about, and I'm going to close with this. I don't even know what time it is. It's God's time. It doesn't matter. Good answer. I'll tell you, I got a great text the other day. Coach Lewis and his wife are here. He texts me. He says, I'm coming in hot Sunday morning from Longview, Texas. I thought he was coming in from Longview this morning. He came in late last night so he could be here. For the service, but I thought that was so cool. I'm coming in hot. Woo! Gina says that sometimes. I come into the parking lot on two wheels. She says, I come into the parking lot on two wheels just to get here on time. I don't know why I brought that up. I just thought it was so cool. It's time you saw coming to church hot. Amen. How far? How far is it? I got another hundred miles to go. That's all right. But when Gina was teaching Wednesday night, and she was just teaching us some real practical things of how we can keep our emotions in check because it's real important. <clears throat> I said, God reminded me of when I was a, a player, I had a coach work with me on something with my hitting, and I did it, and I made a correction, and uh, he said, man, that looks really good. That looks really good. Then he said, now make that comfortable to you. Make that comfortable. Because at the time when we hear something, you know, it sounds good, but we're not, we're not used to it, and, man, you really don't. But you know what? If you work at it and you keep doing it, you can make it. So what that means is I had to take an active role in my development. We all have to take an active role in our development as believers. And it's not a one-time thing. It's not a two-day thing. It's not a week thing. It's day by day working it out, you know, making stuff feel comfortable that maybe not feel comfortable right now, coming into a setting that you're not used to, but you know what? I'm going to keep coming, and I'm going to get comfortable with this whole thing. 
Amen. And I'm going to make it like it's just a part of my life. This is who I am. It's part of my, it's just part of my uh, um, DNA, if you will. It's, you know, it's God's, God's DNA just on the inside of me. And now all of a sudden where I did, I felt uneasy. I really felt a little bit unsure. I'm more sure of myself. Why? Because it didn't come just one time and that's it. It's day by day. Keep doing it. Make it feel comfortable to you. This is important. And I'll say again, there are so many, there are a lot of people who are looking for a breakthrough for something rather than involving themselves in the godly process that will change everything. I didn't even have you open your Bible today. All you did was talk, talk, talk. That's okay. I quoted some scripture, didn't I? <laughs> that counts as a sermon. But all of these things, kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, joy. Yeah. Amen. There's just no end to it. There's just no end to the peace that you have. There's no end to God's reign and authority. I don't care what you're looking like on TV. You know what the biggest fight, if, there, if you want to say there's a fight right now, it's not against territory being taken in Ukraine or people being overthrown, governments being overthrown. You know what the biggest fight there is right now in the church? It's the fight for truth. Amen. Amen. Are we willing to take a stand? I'm going to fight for what's right. Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth would make you free. A lot of, you know, we've got a lot of people that are risking their lives as freedom fighters for people. You know what? We need to put our lives on the line and say, I am going to fight, and I am going to do whatever it takes for truth to prevail in my life, in my family's life. I'm going to take back some stuff that I've let go. I'm going to return to my first love. And even though, man, it's been a long time since I've done stuff like this, that's all right. Jesus, Jesus just said to do it. So with that, just being, he just said to do it, okay, I'm going to allow him to, he'll produce the rest that needs to come. Amen. But this is all part, this breakthrough versus process. They're both important because we're going to see the supernatural like that. But you know what? That comes through the day by day, people declaring stuff every single day. I received my healing. I received their healing. They're going to have it in Jesus' name. I'm going to hold fast the profession of my faith, unwavering. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to close right now. Anybody get anything out of this today? If something you heard today, man, I don't know. Man, I just, I, I hear you, but I just, can you make it be comfortable in your life? Are you willing to make it feel comfortable? There's something inside you that registers that it's true. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we are people that took our, took our conversion and actually lived it? <laughs> you know? I don't know how many times I've seen people at the altar, they give their lives. Many, many maybe give their lives for the first time today. And I tell them, hey, man, Get here every time the doors are open. Hang around godly people. Get in the Word of God. And what I'm trying to do, I want to get you involved in the process that's going to help you grow in the days ahead. <coughs> Unfortunately, over the years, I've seen people that are emotionally spent at the altar, but you don't see them again. So that's when, that's when we don't give up on them. We just keep going after them. Amen. Keep encouraging them. Amen. But, uh, but that's, you know, God gives you an enlightened thought. Oh, just one thought. I remember T.L. Osborne said this. He says, you're one revelation away. One revelation away. I remember that deeply impacted me at the time, and Gina got me a pen holder uh, for my desk. This when I was on staff at Living Stones, and she had engraved in a one revelation away. You know, if you don't like the thought you have, think another thought. 
You don't like what's going on, just start calling things that be not as though they are. Start using your mouth. Start using your mouth. You know, the mouth is the first step to testimony, and the second is just remembering. That's the second step. Keep remembering, you know. Well, people already gave their lives to the Lord. I'm not going to have an altar call right now. But are y'all? I'll tell you what, I'm looking at you bunch here, and I'm seeing you getting more and more excited as the day goes on. Man. Man. You're going to be very dangerous to the enemy in the days ahead. You already are. But you're watching online. We love you, and we... You know, we got people from different states watching. We have people from different states that say, this is my church. You know, they're, they're not able to be with us. They'd like to be, but they, so we're reaching people all over the world. How do you like that? Amen. So, Father God, we love you and praise you. I thank you for this day. This is the day you've made. So we're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it today. Father God, I thank you. We are just too blessed to be stressed. And Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in us. I thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the breakthroughs. We thank you for the suddenlies. But we are more than willing to be involved in your process for our life. And we just thank you and give you the praise for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Huh? Oh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Even the pastor has to be reminded. <laughs>